Hello, everybody. Welcome to Half Court Headlines, episode number eight. Um, a lot of you are probably wondering where is Aiden. Uh, Aiden isn't here. I had to film one episode since my fantasy draft is tonight, and it's a league that has five hundred dollars on the line. So, you know, you gotta perform, get a good draft. So. This is really the only way it could happen, but it's happening, and let's get right into the news. Um, good amount of headlines happen in the NBA this week. Let's jump right into it. One second. The new update came out for this thing, so... A lot of moving parts and stuff like that. Um, here we go. Um, the Knicks, they have a new big three. Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett, and Julius Randle. Um, after extending R.J. Barrett, the Knicks have invested $340 million into their big three until 2023. That's a lot of money, you know. Definitely not a cheap big three. Um, it's a really big chunk of their cap. They, I don't think they have any cap space until the next couple years, couple three or four years. Um, I'll just give you the players' names. Um, Jalen Brunson, undraft, unrestricted free agent in 2026. He is due. He's due 104 million until 2025. 16.3 points last year, 3.9 rebounds, 4.8 assists. He shot 50% from the field, 37% from three, 21.6 points, 4.6 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 46% from the field, and 30, 35% from three, all in the playoffs. Um, so he definitely performed in the playoffs with Dallas this year. I think that's that's exactly why he got the bag, you know. Uh, players like that, you perform in the playoffs, you're gonna get you're gonna get paid, assuming that you stay like that. Um, yeah, um, he definitely got better this season, so I think that's what the Knicks are banking on. Um, R.J. Barrett, unrestricted free agent in 2027, do 130 million until 2026. Uh, 20 points, 5.8 rebounds, three assists, 41 percent of the field. 34% from three. He's basically bound to be an all-star if he continues this trend. Um, I think he's only 22 or 23, so he should be getting better. He will be getting better for sure um, as the years go on. So good for them um, after extending him for the next five, the next four years. Um, Julius Randle, unrestricted free agent in 2026. Do 114 million until 2025. 20 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, 41% from the field, 31% from three. He's an all-star last year. Um, he's averaged basically 20 points throughout his career. If he can get you 20 points and 10 rebounds, I think you're pretty set. All these guys are capable of scoring 20 plus points on any given night. Nick's definitely got better, but um the East is definitely stacked, so. Um, might be a little bit tough to maneuver in there. Um, no cap space, no real cap space until 2025. Um, they locked up Mitchell Robinson. They locked up Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, and Brunson. Until that time, all the other players, the role players, like the Cam Radishes, uh, Evan Fournier's, all those guys, um, are all locked up for a good chunk of time. Um, yeah, all the Derek Roses, Emmanuel Quickly's, Cameron Ashes, all those guys. Um, Obi Toppin, I think, is going to have a good year. So um could be very interesting to see who gets paid next for the Knicks because they got a bunch of young guys, combination of young and old veterans. You, you're usually going to have a good team when you have a bunch of old and young players. And the Knicks have that, but it's very tough since the East is super competitive. The parity is definitely there. So it'll be fun as a fan, but... Knicks fans, I don't know. Um, yeah, overall, if I had to rate this big three out of 10, 
I'd say a six. It's definitely a good big three, but it's not like the best compared to other teams. You know, you have the Nets, KD, Kyrie, Ben Simmons. That's a great big three. You have Giannis, um, Chris Middleton. I don't know. You could probably say. See, let's let's use a box. <clears throat> Yeah, Giannis, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton. The Sixers, they got uh, Embiid, Harden, and then they got uh, Tyrese Maxey. There's a bunch of great big threes in the East, and it it's better than average like compared to the other big threes and the other teams in the East, but um, it's really not going to do too much, you know. Um, here we go. The Jazz apparently declined a next trade offer of two unprotected first round picks and RJ Barrett. Um, I said it's honestly such an L. They needed to add a top guy like Toppin. Definitely should have put on Toppin or Randall because I think Toppin is going to be better than uh, Randall in the next coming years. Um, and they could have added Cam Reddish because I guess apparently Cam Reddish. Uh, requested a trade, and then he said, oh, no, I didn't. But, you know, could have put a couple more young guys. I think the Knicks are just kind of an L right now. If you have Mitchell along with R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, and um, Jalen Brunson, like, that team is for sure making the playoffs. Um, I said, yeah, for sure, give up Reddish. Um, Knicks are absolutely soft. Um when a player like Mitchell is on the market, you have to give up anything you can possibly imagine to land him. And the Cavs did that, you know. They got they gave up some young players, and I think it was a pretty even trade, you know. We'll get into that later. But um you really have to give up the young players like Cam Reddish. He's probably not gonna play with um the guards, RJ Barrett and uh Brunson in front of him and you know, Toppin, I don't think he's going to play much either with Randall in front of him. Um, honestly, I don't know. Like, Thibodeau is the type of coach who, he's he's a fine coach, but, you know, he's not always going to play young players. It's like him and Doc Rivers, you know. They just kind of just sit on their you-know-whats and um, they just try and get all the veteran players, getting all the minutes so that young players can never develop. It's the same thing with Doc Rivers, you know. So, um, overall, the young players, if they don't develop, it's kind of useless. And um, L on Leon Roses and the Knicks part right there because they could have gotten uh, Donovan Mitchell, who's a better player than R.J. Barrett, better player than Randall, better player than Brunson. So, would have been fun for sure for all those uh, – those naysayer Knicks fans. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Um, but doesn't happen. So just got to live with that. Uh, the Knicks final offer for the trade. R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel quickly. Two unprotected first-round picks. They said they were unwilling to add a first round, a third first-round pick for another young player. Um, and Jazz goes to Cleveland. So really, um, I think if you're trying to Win now, you got to give up some draft picks because it's it's really like obvious. Like, give up some draft picks because you're not going to need them. Those draft picks are going to be top like 20 picks, you know. It's it really won't matter, you know. But the Knicks, I guess they see something in Mitchell that we don't um, since they didn't want to give up a lot of their draft capital and young players. But um, yeah, tough for them. Really thought they should have given up top and or camera to sure both in picks, but that's just the way the NBA goes. All right, next topic. Here we go. Um, Rockets unveil throwback jerseys in honor of their San Diego beginnings. Um, celebration of their 55th anniversary of the team. Inaugural season was in 1967 when they played in San Diego, relocated to Houston in 1971 won two championships in Houston back-to-back 1994 and 1995. Um, 
it's definitely cool to see teams uh, revealing and throwing back uh, to their roots, their their history. I think it it's cool. Um, personally, not a big fan of these these jerseys. I know a lot of people are like, oh, they're cool, you know, throwback. Throwback jerseys are cool. This one, not really a big fan of. Um, they look a lot like the Seattle Sonics jerseys, you know. Minus a couple elements, but uh, the green, the yellow, the white, it's it's fine, but it's it, not a big fan of it. Like from other ones, I saw like the the Suns ones that those were good. Um, the Warriors ones were all right. Uh, this this and the Warriors is kind of the same, you know. The Bucks throwback jerseys were good. This one's fine. Um, it also looks like the, you know, that one commercial with LeBron, um, the Sprite one where he's playing basketball or no, he's playing baseball. This looks literally like the, the Sprite baseball jerseys, you know, like it's fine. It's cool. Um, I'm sure they'll look fine for the first games, but, you know, personally not a big fan of them. Who knows? It might look actually good with other players like uh, Jalen Green on them. Um, uh, Christian, not Christian, what's gone. Um, yeah, they're fine. Um, if I had to rate them out of 10, I would say 5 out of 10. They're, they're all right. They're not terrible. Um, I'm waiting to see a terrible jersey, but so far so good for the Rockets, I guess. Um, next topic, next topic. Um, one that I... I'm very passionate about um, it's the Clippers. Um, here we go. John Wall and Paul George were putting in the work in the gym. Wall screams, I'm back, blank, 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 uh, at the rec center. Listen, I am so excited for the Clippers this season. You get a multiple time all star, John Wall. You got Paul George, who was basically an all star last year. Um, and you get Kawhi Leonard coming back, who is an all-time player. You get all those players who, if they're healthy, you can make an argument for the Western Conference Finals, if not the NBA Finals. And um, I'm going to come out and be bold right here. If fully healthy, Los Angeles Clippers will make the NBA Finals, and they will win the NBA Finals. And why am I saying this? We, we all know about Kawhi. I don't need to go into depth about Kawhi. Um, Paul George, this season, he shot, he scored 24 points. He got seven rebounds, seven assists. He shot 42% from the field and 35% from three. All-star numbers. The only reason he wasn't an all-star was because he was injured. Tough injury, but um, he's an all-star, definitely an all-star caliber player. He's only 32 years old, so definitely still in his prime. A lot of people argue he isn't, but I would say he is because his prime was with Indiana, I would say like 2017 and no, 20, yeah, 2018 with the Thunder would be his base prime 28 points. He's 24, 25 points. It's the same thing. You know, the only reason why he was scoring more because Westbrook and Paul George were doing all the lifting and everyone else was doing nothing. But Paul George is a, at his peak, personally, my favorite Clippers player. Um, he's going to have a big year this year. John wall. It's going to do him. Um, last year, not last year, two years ago, um, last year he sat out 21. He scored 21 points again, three rebounds, seven assists, shot 40% from the field, 30, 32% from three in 40 games in 2021. Um, definitely could have a bounce back year. I'm absolutely all for it. Of course. Right. Um, I love the signing. Uh, I think he's here for a year or two years more. So 
good for them. They get a multiple time all star back in the fold. Um, personally, I think it'll be. Let's, let's look at their lineup right now. Because. So here's how I think it'll go. I think it'll be John Wall starting, Norman Powell shooting guard, Paul George small forward, Kawhi Leonard power forward, and Zubac at the center. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is really small forward, but you can move him around. Both PG and Kawhi are the same position, basically. And then you would have Reggie Jackson um, backing up John Wall, unless Reggie and Reggie could start, honestly. I would be fine if John Wall um, was on the bench, you know. And it honestly might end up happening because he's a great player. If you have a veteran, um, multiple-time all-star on your bench at, like, age 32, that's unheard of. That doesn't happen. But um, if he's a veteran or if he's on the bench, then you're you're cooking. Uh, you got Terrence Mann, great young player. I expect a great year for him. Robert Covington. This guy's underrated. Like, come on. You can't be serious right now. Nicholas Batum, great shooting center, great defender. Just mwah, just everything about him. I love it, you know. Um, Nicholas Batum doing his stuff. Marcus Morris, underrated. A lot of people are hating him because, you know, he misses shots and stuff. But when he's hot, Marcus Morris is hot. I love, um, I love every time Marcus Morris comes out. Jason Preston came off of an injury um, last year. You could see some some good buckets from him. Uh, went to Ohio, um, basically carried their team in March Madness or before March Madness. I don't know if they made a run or not, but um, he's there. He could have a bounce back for a good year for Eclipse. You got Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard, great shooter. I think he's fifth in NBA 2K for three-point shooting uh, numbers. Luke Kennard is an absolute sniper from deep. Uh, Luke Kennard is a great player. Brandon Boston Jr., incredible young player. Another one of those Clippers. Clippers got a bunch of nice young dogs on their team. Coffee, he just got re-signed. He's a good scorer. And Diabate, who is a center, um, he helped Michigan in March Madness. Um, I don't think he's going to, uh, really contribute this year, but he could help in the long run later on, but Clippers looking phenomenal. You know, I'm super excited for this team. I think, you know, healthy, this Clippers team is making the finals and winning the finals. So, um, I'm just going to leave it at that, but. Clippers are looking spicy, you know. Look out for the Clippers. I know a lot of people are sleeping on us, and I'm fine with that, you know. Keep sleeping on us until um, we actually surprise you, and things will be a lot different once we're fully healthy and people see who we really are. So I'll leave it at that. Keep sleeping on us. Um. Another free agency news, uh, the Raptors, they re-signed Josh Jackson. A uh, little bit about Josh Jackson. He was the number four overall pick with Kansas in 2018, I believe, and the, the Suns drafted him um, at the age of 20. Um, he's really been injured a lot, you know, a lot of injuries. Uh, tough, tough for any player. Um, but... Uh, he averaged 4-2-2, two, and two, shot 35% from the field, and 18% from three. Not the greatest numbers with Phoenix, but he got traded, I'm pretty sure, to Detroit. He averaged 13-4-2 and two, um, with the Raptors. Or <laughs> No, he averaged those numbers in Detroit, and the Raptors are hoping to rekindle some of that magic. Um, I think... Uh, he could really um, step up for the Raptors. The Raptors, they have a good amount of forward depth. Um, the Raptors, for sure, looking to make the playoffs. He could contribute. You know, we've seen lottery picks revive their careers. You know, um, 
I don't know. It could be interesting. Um, we'll see, though. I think the Raptors could definitely benefit to at least, like, give a shot for the former number four overall pick. Played well for Detroit in 2020. 2021. Yeah, 2020. So um, definitely could see what happened. He played with the, the Kings last season. Um, we'll see what happens. But um, overall, very solid player. He was solid a year or so ago, so um, we will see what happens with them. Uh, Lakers, they decline a Pacers trade that would have sent Westbrook, THT, and two first-rounders for Miles Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, and Daniel Tice. Um, If you're the Lakers, why are you declining this? You give up. A guy you already gave up for Patrick Beverly in THT. And you give up a guy, Westbrook, who you really want to, you know, give up. Like, overall, it's been, like, like this entire offseason, it's been like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Westbrook this, Westbrook that, you know. You can get rid of him at, what is it, like, $50 million contract. Um you want to get rid of him for sure. And I think those first round picks are what scared the Lakers away. Um, but if you get rid of Westbrook and THT, the two players who you wanted to get rid of, um, you get Miles Turner, great rim protector. He would basically be the starting center. You get Buddy Heald, who is a good, he's a good veteran. He's been not as good as he was a couple years ago, but he's still solid. I would take him on my team and you get, um, you get Daniel Tice who he's a good backup center. You know, um, I would for sure take that Lakers fans. I don't know. I think you want Westbrook as gone. I think you want Westbrook gone as soon as possible. And the fact that they didn't take this trade just signals that, um, they believe in Westbrook I think he just had a bad season um really the only thing that's stopping the Lakers is health because I think a healthy AD healthy Westbrook and a healthy LeBron that's a good team and all they really need is shooting they got Patrick Beverly who I guess he's a solid shooter they just need shooting and they would have gotten shooting with Buddy Heald but um Tough break for them that they uh, didn't really accept that trade. Um, but, yeah, that, that would have been interesting to see uh, really who, you know, the shuffling of pieces on the, the rosters, you know. Um, here's a big one. The big trade, the big Mac Daddy trade of them all. Uh Donovan Mitchell is a Cleveland Cavalier. I got this news at about, like, it was a weird time, like 2.33 p.m. Eastern time on a Tuesday. It's weird. It, like, doesn't happen at all, you know? No, it was, like, on a Thursday. But anyways, you know, it's just, like, came out of the, came out of nowhere, you know? Like, Stuff like this doesn't happen very often. And out of all the teams, the teams who we thought he was getting traded to, the Heat, the Knicks, no, out of nowhere, Cavs at the 11th hour swoop in Donovan Mitchell and they get him for a nice package. Uh, The Cavs obviously get Donovan Mitchell, no one else. And the Jazz, they get Sexton, Laurie Markinen, Oshai, and three first-round picks. Long of two pick swaps. Um, let's get right into it. What do the Cavs get? The Cavs get a multiple-time All-Star, three-time All-Star, 26 points, four rebounds, five assists, 45% from the field, and 36% from three. He's even better in the playoffs. 25 years old now. He's under contract for three more years. Cavs get an absolute great player right now. They get a certified All-Star. He's going to produce immediately. Uh, Just the type of player you want in a loaded Eastern Conference. And for 
the Jazz. The Jazz, they get Colin Sexton. Um, 2020, he could have been an all-star. He averaged 20, yeah, 21 points a game. He had three assists. He had two rebounds a game. And he shot, he shot 48% from the field and 38% from three. So, 21-point score. A um, lot younger than Mitchell for sure. Um, but he was a former first-round pick. Uh, 24 years old. I think he can definitely produce, um, especially since he was injured last season. Um, and then he signed right after he got traded. It was a sign-and-trade to Utah. So he got $72 million guaranteed. Um, he got the bag. Uh, only downside to this one is he was injured, torn meniscus on his knee. Um, he missed the entire year last year. Um, great resigning and a great deal for the Jazz to get Sexton, who's basically a little bit worse uh, Donovan Mitchell, but, you know, they're going to have to deal with it. Jazz are rebuilding. They get a player somewhat similar to Donovan Mitchell's stature. Um, next player, Lori Markinen. Uh, he's a solid player. 15, 6, and 1. That's what he's going to average you. Uh, shot 45% from the field. 36% from 3. He's a very solid bench piece. Only 25 years old. Um, I think Laurie Markin is kind of slept on. Not a lot of people are like familiar with him. But he'll, he'll he's a bucket, you know. He'll get you some points off the bench. He'll do his job. Just the type of players you want on your team. Um, Jazz are not going to be as good as they once were, but they're not bad, you know. They definitely have some players who can produce. And then they got Oshai. Definitely going to say this wrong. Agbaji. Oshai Agbaji. Um, he carried Kansas in March Madness. 19-5-2 in his senior year at Kansas. Drafted round one. Pick 14. Uh, summer league, he averaged 15, 5, and 2, shot 35, 37% from the field and 38% from three. He's a really solid player. I think he'll produce in the NBA for sure. Um, you get three players who could potentially score 20 plus points, and the Cavs get multiple time All Star in his prime. Um, personally, who do I think wins this trade? I think the Jazz in the long run, the Jazz for sure will the straight since they get some young talent and they get a bunch of first round picks. How many first round picks do the Jazz have right now? They have 12 first round picks over the next seven years. Um, that's incredible. You know, just the amount of draft capital that you have. I, they're trying to be like the Thunder. Get as much draft capital as you can for a playoff team basically two years ago. Um, but right now the Cavs win the deal. I would say maybe in a year or two, the jazz could start like really competing, but right now it's, um, the Cavs winning that one. Um, yeah, they essentially get a younger Sexton plus Oshai and marketing and great pickups and they get two first round picks. So. Adding to that pit collection. Very spicy stuff for them. Um, good for them. It was a very entertaining trade. I don't think a lot of people saw this one coming, but, you know, they got it. So, cool beans for sure. Um, here's Donovan Mitchell's last remarks for, um, for Utah. Here's what he said. He said, thank you for the memories and incredible times. You guys watched me grow up on and off the floor. Coach Quinn, thank you for giving me the opportunity and trusting me to lead this team for the past five years. Love. Donovan Mitchell, a very classy player. Um, he gave it everything he could after multiple playoff failures with Coach Snyder and Gobert. Um, multiple playoff failures at the hands of the Mavs. Clippers, um, I think the Jazz, was it the, so it was the Clippers, the Mavs, um, he beat the Thunder, um, 
who was that one team that hit the buzzer beater? The Nuggets. Yeah, the Nuggets. A um, couple others in between there, but Jazz definitely couldn't get it done with that team. Um, but Donovan Mitchell is a Cav. It'll be very interesting um, to see what happens. I think the Cavs. Where did I have the Cavs making the the playoff seating? I have the Cavs at the number eight seed. I think the Cavs could definitely be a six or a five seed now. Cavs are definitely up there. Cavs got a bunch of young talent. Assuming they all produce, which I think they all will produce. Um, let's see. So the Cavs, Darius Garland, underrated. Donovan Mitchell, great player. Okoro, who I think is going to have a good year. Evan Mobley, underrated. Jared Allen, good center. Ricky Rubio, good good veteran player. Harris Levert, underrated. Shetty Osman, underrated. Kevin Love, good veteran presence. Robin Lopez, he's a solid veteran. And the rest are the rest. They have another Mobley sibling also on there. So could be interesting. I think the if healthy, I think Utah can make a push for the playoffs. Anything can happen, you know. That's what makes the NBA so much fun. Um, here's another one for you. Uh, Lakers and the Suns are targeting a trade for Bojan Bogdanovich. Bojan Bogdanovich, 33 years old, small forward or power forward. One year left, $19.5 million annually. 18, 4, and 2. 45% from the field, 38% from three. The average triple double figures since 2016 is a very solid piece. Um, they said the Suns are the Lakers. I don't know why they included the Lakers. Um, I only see the Suns as this valuable, viable option here. Um, Lakers don't have a ton of assets. They kind of lost all of it after they traded. THT and others for Patrick Beverly. So... Lakers are kind of stuck right now. Suns have a lot of young assets. Um, here's the mock trade. Um, I don't know why, but um, it says Cam Johnson, Jake Crowder, Landry Shamit, and a first-round pick. So Utah and the Suns will get Bojan and Jordan Clarkson. Um, the new starting five for the Suns would be Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Miles Bridges, Bojan, and DeAndre Aiden. That's Kind of that I would say that's an improvement, yeah. And um, the Suns they get, or the Jazz they get, Mike Conley, Colin Sexton, Cam Johnson, Laurie Markinen, and Walter Kessler. Um, again, in the long run, I think the Jazz they would win this mock trade. For the Suns that's a win now trade. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the mock trades, but I think this was overall a very solid mock trade. Um, it would be cool if it could go down because I think the Suns, if they don't win now, they're kind of screwed in the long run. And, you know, I like seeing trades happen and um, overall it could be very entertaining to see more stuff like this happen. It's I don't think it's going to happen. I think Bojan is going to end up staying unless, unless some surprise team comes out of nowhere, comes out of the bush, and they take him for whatever. So um, the Jazz, they have Danny Ainge behind them. You know, he's a master at the trades and all that. So um, they already have a bunch of draft picks, just like what he did with the Celtics, you know. Um, it could be interesting to see what the, the Jazz end up doing and developing their young players. Danny Ainge is a good developer of players. So cool stuff overall. Last topic, um, I guess Steph Curry is being linked to um, the Hornets because that's where his dad played, Del Curry. Uh, he said, if there's one team I could play for besides the Warriors, it would be the Hornets. And I think that would be sick. You have Michael Jordan at the helm along with uh, Stephen Curry, one of the best shooters of all time. Um that's really sick, you know. It'd be cool to see 
like a Michael Jordan last dance and you see a Steph Curry last dance, last team he plays for, and then that's it. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be all for it since, you know, Curry would be out of the West, out of the Clippers way. But besides that, you know, it, it's cool to see um, players move, great players move around. Personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Curry is always going to be a warrior for life, but um, crazier things have happened, you know. So, could be interesting. Um, you have to keep a look on. You have to keep an eye on that for sure. Um, other than that, I think that's going to do it for Half Court Headlines, episode number eight. Sorry, Aiden couldn't make it. Um, fantasy is number one right now. Got a big draft, so that's the only reason why. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, comment who you want me to cover next. Uh what we should cover next, all this and that. We've got uh, predictions that we were going to do today, the Western Conference predictions, but we decided to restart our predictions since uh, such a massive trade, like Donovan Mitchell uh, just got traded to the Cavs. So, you know, we have to restart that. We will restart those uh, predictions. We'll have a big episode in the future with all these trades um all these predictions a big prediction episode it's gonna be fun um hope you guys stay tuned for that other than that um i'm andrew and i will see you all in the next one peace out guys